podcast Amsterdam. amazing guest here today, Eileen Kennedy. So uh, Eileen, what exactly is it that you do? I mean, we're talking about having babies, but um, yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself and um, what is it that you do related to having babies? Hmm. Uh, should I say something about how I got here? Yes, yeah. tell us. So, how did you get here? Besides get getting here? wet on the bike this morning. Yes, besides <laughs> getting wet on the bike this morning. And uh, so I've been living in Amsterdam since I was about eight years old, and I grew up in the Swiss Alps. Oh, with the hills are alive. Exactly. <laughs> Something like that? Me. Yes. Okay. Wow. You spin around a lot? I, <laughs> well, I spent those first eight years, you know, skipping around the Lone fields. And a, <laughs> oh, yes. I know. I have it, I have it in my head. Cause, Hanging cause out with the few, cows. <laughs> Playing in the trees, eating I, milk. Up. <laughs> I actually have seen uh, photos. You had, you really lived like in a cabin, right? A chalet. A chalet. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. And our neighbors were farmers, and I spent most of those years with twigs in my hair eating and fondue. scratched knees. And wow. did you make your own cheese? Uh, no, but our neighbors did. Wow. They were farmers. What a life. We this would go there and so get milk that was like warm from uh, the cow. And I would go over and pick eggs uh, with a little egg box. And Why uh, did you guys come to Amsterdam? Yeah. yeah what a I change. Wondered, also, uh, it took me a while to get used to the, <laughs> to the Where climate. Where are we? <laughs> um, and the darkness and the rain. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, but yeah, really, really enjoyed it there. And uh, having this outdoor uh, childhood. And, yeah. Um, uh, came over here uh, with my uh, two sisters and my American dad and oh, Finnish yeah, mother. Oh, so, wow. Um, so international much? Okay. So, yeah. Yes, very <laughs> Finnish <much so>. mom, <laughs> yes. American dad, living in a chalet in the mountains. Yes. Great. That's wow. really... You, yeah. It's really like a reality show a bit. Yeah. If that only we had that now. back then. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then you thought, No outlets in the Alps, though. <laughs> no. Let, let's move to Amsterdam. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Let's move to Amsterdam. So, yeah, we came here and uh, I did all my schooling here. And then I ended up becoming a psychologist. Oh, yeah. Okay. Which uh, I very much enjoyed. And then at some point I became a mom. And then everything <laughs> oh, changed. And then everything Don't we all? changed. Yeah. <laughs> and then everything changed. And I all of a sudden realized, oh my goodness, there is so much changing in my life. And nobody really talked about all of this change. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wow. And I even had like a good experience, like good birth, you oh. know, good postpartum, all that. And I was like, whoa, this is really intense. And like, why is there not any support for this? You know, working mm-hmm. in mental mm-hmm. health myself, I was thinking like, how are all these other women doing this? And I really wanted to like do Still something. Wondering. Ab- yeah. Do something about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also my first birth experience was so uh, empowering that I really felt yeah, just kind of uh my world shifted with birth and um I had become a mindfulness teacher mm-hmm. oh, right. while yeah. I was pregnant. Thinking oh. that it was nice for, you know, balancing my work and changing my career. And I didn't think that it would actually impact my birth, but it ended up being so useful mm-hmm. that after my birth, my midwife was like, whoa, you're like so cool, so zen, so focused. How did you do that? Yeah. And and then I told her that I was like using my mindfulness. And then she said like, well, have you heard of mindful birthing and parenting? There's this really cool childbirth education course that uses mindfulness. And then... Instantly, I mean, I think I even gave birth that day. I was like, <laughs> that I have to do this. That started it. <laughs> I have to, you know, I have to do this. I have plans. Come I out. I have to teach this because all women need these skills. Right. Um, little did I know that you need those skills beyond birth even more mm-hmm, than you maybe mm-hmm. need them in birth. Yes. To kind of keep your cool with all the things that come with parenting. So, oh, yes. yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we actually met because uh, you are teaching some amazing courses for expecting parents and moms. Yeah. Uh, and 
and uh, we have been collaborating with my Moments with Mothers group here in Amsterdam. So that has been really great. Yeah, it's been and, awesome. Uh, yeah, you're you're always coming up with great ideas for new workshops, supporting moms here. Well, and also I think moms really need it. The only thing is, and that's, uh, you know, because here comes Mrs. Downey again. But Oh, jeez. Is um, the rain getting to you? <laughs> sorry. Well, Negative you know, well, as, as people know, I've, of course, had a horrible birth mm, with, yeah. with an extremely preemie. Um, mm. But I know, for instance, a friend of mine did the mindfulness birthing course, was completely ready, and also had a premature baby. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I also feel for her, I remember she was like, I really tried to do it, you know, to handle with the stress and all that stuff, but it did not work. And she had a horrible yeah. experience where, for me, the only thing that kept my mind sort of focus was like be prepared at least know what's going to happen like from the doctors like from the medical point of view mm. so in that case do you think um the mindfulness will also help just do you sort of do a sort of doomsday scenario like if it does go wrong <laughs> this is how you No, well it's not focused on any particular outcome of it being okay. positive or negative, it's more of like being with what is in that moment. And if that's a birth that is coming at 36 weeks and you are feeling, you know, anxious and stressed and in panic, mm -hmm. uh, then that's what's there in that moment. And yeah, or C-section. With, with being with that. Yeah, yeah. So, any scenario where it doesn't know, go as you have planned it in your head, right? And I want to talk about yeah. that later. You can plan as much as you want, yeah. but... <laughs> Nature has its own way. Yeah, exactly. No, and sometimes things is, you know, uh, the things that happen can still be traumatic, yep. no matter how mindful you are or whatever. And I've been there too. My second birth was extremely traumatic. And I don't think any meditation would have <laughs> taken that <Yeah>. away. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that's what I like that you But it did help me that, yeah. um, be with that in a particular way. Accepted. You know, and that I remember also. Even in an extremely traumatic situation, we had, like, all the personnel in the hospital and intensive care coming up to us, like, you guys are so calm. Mm. Like, they expected us to be more stressed yeah. Yeah. and upset. And, you know, that came later. But, yeah. Okay. So. so it's good to know that at least the whole mindfulness set – you know, that that does help also in stressful situations. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Oh. Well, yeah. I, I think uh, we're going to talk about those things, you know, what to expect when you are pregnant, when mm -hmm. you're uh, preparing for uh, giving birth in the Netherlands, but also uh, your your skills as a mindfulness teacher and, and how you can apply those in, in pregnancy, birth, and beyond. Mm -hmm. And you're a doula, right? So yeah. also yeah. talking about... A lot about to talk about. You know, those first uh, first days, everybody, well, I think when you're pregnant, you have this vision of how it will be. Unfortunately for me and Lana, it was not like that. Nope, nope not at all. <laughs> but um, it, it it is possible, you know. I think it's it's good to be realistic about, like you said, Lana, you know, mm -hmm. anything can happen. Oh, and yeah. You don't want to scare people, but, no. um, you, have but to, you know, you have, you to, have, be have to be realistic. Yeah. yeah. You are not in control. No. <laughs> hey, um, uh, so let's just give an example. First of all, I'm working with a family right now. She's pregnant, brand new to Amsterdam. What would you advise, first of all? How do you start? So do you go to a doctor first and go like, hi, I'm pregnant? Or <laughs> no, because they will say, that's great for you. Go back home. That's true. I have that. I was exactly. like, but don't and you then, that uh, I'm lying? So you will uh, need to uh, find a midwife. Nobody yeah. will tell you which one to choose. Mm -hmm. So right. you go online and, I don't know, use Google Maps and <laughs> look where are the midwives. Look at their websites. You go on to the Amsterdam Mamas and ask recommendations. Yep. Yeah. And find what you think suits you and your partner and what you find important or where you feel at home, you know, so it's really up to you. And, and in your neighborhood, I guess, huh? That can be handy. Close by. Yeah. Are yeah. there, um, I, can you visit more than one midwife? I didn't. I just literally went to the Me one too. closest yeah, by. Yeah, you could. Yeah. And are there different types of midwife practices? You know, generally there are group practices. In the Netherlands, you also have a couple of uh, caseload midwives. 
some of them work really just like in duo tandem structure and some of them work in a group. Okay. And these midwives will, uh, yeah, pretty much be the person who's there to come to your birth. Uh, whereas if you go to a group practice, there's yeah, usually a pool of yeah. four or five midwives and one of them will come to your birth and you will usually meet all of them, uh, hopefully, during your prenatal uh, visits. Okay. Yeah, that is one thing that's really different from the U.S., for example, yeah. uh, that – here, you don't necessarily know who's going to deliver your baby. <laughs> Which is strange. Well, it's, and I must for say, me, it was a strange concept. Yeah. I have to say, who's delivering your baby? Um, pizzas are delivered. Babies are born. <laughs> <laughs> and it's usually the mother doing it. And, oh, unless okay, yes. a C-section. I think you could say that the doctor did it in a way. Uh, but with birth, I think it's really important that women feel that they are birthing their babies. Uh, yes. And that, that that's a different... Uh, hmm. Also, cultural perspective. Yeah. Um, I guess I want to know who's going to catch them, you know? <laughs> who's there? Like, <laughs> yours flew out? Well, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, midwife can catch it. One after the uh, other. No. I wish I could do the <laughs> sound now. But like. <laughs> hey, but. No, I mean more so yeah. about. Who's there in the room with you, right? If sometimes yeah. you never met the person before, and that can be a strange feeling. Yes. I think it's important to yeah. realize that that because if can you're in happen. there for twelve hours, I know you can like yell and go nuts against your partner. <laughs> so yeah. you know if the woman yeah. is like la, 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 talking to you, and you're like shut up, get her out of here. <laughs> yeah, like you want more of a you know like boot camp lady than I don't know. Well, because I guess you know, so you choose the midwife practice. Yes. Yeah. And there hopefully you've met all of the midwives. Is that something you can kind of insist to say I want to make sure I meet everyone or well, you can how direct an, can you be you about You can be this? An, uh, make an effort for that. And you know, I think uh with everything um that if you don't yeah, speak your opinion or voice your wishes, then probably you won't get what you want, you hmm. know. So can they refuse you? <laughs> the midwife practice? Yeah. If you're too demanding, I can see that happening. Oh, maybe they don't like you. Mm. Not really. It kind of depends on what you're demanding. If you they, you feel they feel that you're asking something of them that they don't feel comfortable with, they may say that they can't offer you um, continue to offer you support. You know, if you're like wanting to do something outside of the protocols that they're working with, oh, okay. your midwife then is obliged. To find another midwife practice for you. Oh, okay. oh they can't just say, "Oh, we won't do that," and, and then goodbye. close the door. Yeah, down. but oh. generally, I mean, I have, I've personally not ever heard any serious stories where people weren't able to easily find a midwife they liked. No, right? Not. That's that's usually fine. But I think it is important to know that if you don't feel comfortable with your midwife practice or their too many people in the group that you feel like, oh, I don't want you at my birth, I don't want you there, <laughs> then maybe consider switching, switching to another practice. And people don't know that they're entitled or allowed to do that. You know, even up to like 38 weeks, if you want to switch oh, wow. care wow. provider, That's what I was gonna ask. you yeah, can switch how... care provider. Yeah. And okay. for, the, you know, you need to find a practice that has space for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but for them, you know, it's just moving one file from A to B. And uh, for you, it's a birth that you will remember for the rest of your life. So um, I think you feeling okay. comfortable is really and, important. Yeah, right. because so that's a midwife. But, um, well, of course, you can choose to give birth at home. It's quite mm -hmm. popular in Netherlands. But yeah. I think majority of expats, internationals, yeah. go to may go to a hospital. Yeah. And in any case, you need to have that in mind that even if you choose a home birth, you might end up at the hospital. Yes. Yeah, because how so, does that work? Because, yes. of, of course, with me, it was like from the get-go, like, you'll be in a hospital. <laughs> um, also, Same I, for me. I, I was high risk, yeah. So I also I personally don't like the idea of a home birth because you have to clean it up. That grosses well, me out. <laughs> the, actually, the, the Kramsorg usually does that for you. Oh, poor lady. <laughs> So you Dang. don't really – and f particularly if you're the person who's uh, doing the birthing, uh, you really have no idea no. What comes what's out. around no. you. Also not so, in hospital. You're you, like, know, nah. you know, people take care of it and you didn't notice. You oh, know, okay. So, you know, 
do you see you a really lot of don't home have births? to have to worry about that okay. and the thing is that the Netherlands used to have a really high home birth percentage yeah. you know it was like 85 percent at home wow. 30 years ago and those figures have switched so it's 15 percent at home the rest is in the oh. hospital oh wow okay. So the thing is, if you choose a hospital birth or you're, if your labor starts and you need to go to the hospital, then um, most um, – let's see. If you're just choosing to go to the hospital, your midwife will come with you and do the birth you with just you choose? in the hospital. Can you just go like – But oh, if right. you become medical – yeah. yeah. Then yeah. you get transferred to the medical team yes. and they work in eight hour shifts. So yeah, you may be seeing me, yeah. quite a few different people. Mm-hmm. You may not be having your midwife with you. No. S- there are some practices where they stay with you if they can or if they're not too busy, but there's a big chance then if you have a medical indication then uh, that they're um, – you'll be losing the familiar face, yeah. which is where it, it's nice to consider the role of a doula yeah. uh, to yeah. have support. Yeah, yeah or we'll the, talk about or that the, for the, sure. the yeah. caseload midwives uh, who usually stay with you even if you ha- end up having a medical birth. Yeah, yeah I want to talk about um, the doula next uh, because personally I wish I maybe would have thought about that. I was immediately uh, a high-risk birth with the twins mm. and was then – categorized as medical and really had no other option. So the midwife I met the first appointment, I actually did see her later after Mm. I gave birth, but I hadn't seen her any time in between. That was kind of funny. Mine came over to the Ronald McDonald house. Mine too, mine too. That's how we bonded. Um, (laughs) But even then, I just wanted to point out that I started to see so many people at different appointments because Mm. I had many appointments. Mm -hmm. And at some point I said, I don't like this. I don't know anyone. Everyone starts over again. And I actually then made a request that I wanted to see the same doctor Mm -hmm. as much as possible the next appointments. She wasn't at the birth in the end. But I just want to point out, like you said before, you you do have a say in it. So even if you're at the hospital or Mm -hmm. the midwife, you can really make your wishes you know, well known. Yeah. Um, and later, I want to talk about maybe uh, if you you encourage people to write a birth plan, that type of stuff. Yeah. But I think it is sometimes if you're in a new country, you maybe feel nervous to speak up, right? And yeah. you probably see that a lot that people feel. Yeah. Unsure. No, and I think I think with with a medical pregnancy, you know, like twins. My sister had twins. Mm-hmm. She experienced the same thing that she felt like I'm just going in there for um, checks and stats. Nobody's actually asking me how I'm doing. Yeah, yes. exactly. And the, the yeah, emotional support well. that would have maybe been there a little bit more with a midwife um, was just non-existent. Where she actually needed that more than with a normal pregnancy because mm-hmm. she yeah. also had yeah. a single pregnancy uh, before that. Um, that I think looking back, she also felt that she would have wanted to have a doula, yeah. you know, to give the emotional support of like, you know, twins. Oh, mm-hmm. my goodness. There's so much more <laughs> happening and you can't compare it to a normal yeah, but birth, also, pregnancy. I, yeah. I, I think we're going to talk about that next, uh, the type of support that you offer. Um, and uh, I, I'm really excited about that because I, I think it's something a lot of people have heard about but don't know much about. So um, we were discussing uh, for a second what a doula was and uh, like having a, you know, familiar face in the room except for your partner. Um, Because you're actually – is there a difference between what you do and a doula does? does, Well, I'm also – I am also a doula. (laughs) So, yeah. And so many people actually don't even know what a doula is or what a doula does and in a way – yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so what well, we're going to say like what doulas don't do because what they do is also holding space, which is not really doing but being. Um, so anyway. <laughs> do, 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 do. We're the bilas, not the doulas. <laughs> okay. So um, – a doula is uh, someone who is there for emotional, physical support for a laboring woman and her partner. And doulas usually get to know you during your pregnancy um, and help you think about your birth wishes and preferences and sometimes help adding some education to that. So once you go into labor, you uh, call your doula whenever you feel that you want to contact her. It could be you know, the first contraction or you feel something is happening. And different than a midwife, in the Netherlands, a midwife will usually come to you when you have active labor contractions every five minutes mm-hmm. for about an hour. Yeah. Your doula will come when you want her. 
Okay, because with the midwife, you kind of have to wait till they say, Go "Okay, time. I'll come over." Yes, yeah. exactly. So if you're fine on your own, you know, it's your choice. But if you feel like, ah, I think you know, I'm a little bit nervous, or I really want somebody there, you know, then your doula will also just come when you feel that you want her presence. And right. if you want her to go and leave you for a while, that's also fine. You know, <laughs> oh. she's just really there to to really uh, accommodate, you know, what what you want for your birth and to help your partner find, you know, his or hers place in the birth room and to help them mm-hmm. support you. So they're not also there to take away the role of the partner, but to really support that. And mm. sometimes you even really need more people and hands to, to, right. to help you go through contractions and to help support you and help you focus and help you feel safe. And It's it's funny because when I heard the word doula, the only doula I knew was from, and I think most Dutch people, from the awful comedy show Dharma and Greg and this, this hippie, armpit hair, stinky <laughs> lady, which also came up in Absolutely Fabulous when Saffron had her baby. So I think for a lot of people, doula – is hippie and a lot of incense and, you know, smoking the chow mm. out kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but that's not the that's, case anymore. No, right? you're not really allowed to bring your candles and incense into the hospital. Okay. So we had to drop <laughs> that. Oh, so. <laughs> but that's it's because no, of but TV. The nice, People do yeah, no, but the, so the nice thing so. is, is that you have all kinds of doulas. Yeah. So what I really recommend people to do is, to, you know, to look around and to interview and meet, you know, two or three doulas with mm-hmm. your partner and to get a sense of like, oh, do we like this person? Do I feel comfortable yeah, with her? It's with usually them. a woman, you know, and see like, oh, do I see you being there at my birth? Yeah. And do but- I feel safe? And you know, As someone yeah. that will take then, over. If your friend is a very pushovery kind of woman, someone will take over and go like, "No, get out of the room. She needs a break." Exactly. Some maybe help you exactly. also uh, execute what you wanted in your birthing plan, right? Yeah, because exactly. I think sometimes yeah. the hospital yeah. might influence that more than you want. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So doulas can be really good advocates for your birth mm. preferences and. You know, they're really there to remind you of your birth preferences, to remind the personnel of your birth preferences. And also what can be really helpful, particularly for the expat community, is to find a doula who speaks both yes. language your language yes. and the right. local language. Because sometimes things get lost in translation or get communicated in Dutch, even though, you know, in hospitals, most people do speak English. They may not stick to that the right. whole time. Yeah. And it can be really nice to have somebody who's experienced and who has seen birth, who knows what's going on and can like really help you make choices and yeah, because support you through that. You think you know, but you have no idea. No, really, you don't. <laughs> no because you're actually – so you're a doula. You're also doing um, birthing courses. You have one yeah. going on starting soon, right? And I have one on that's uh, finishing soon. Uh, we have a lovely group. And in January, I'll be teaching the next, mi- next uh, Mindful Birthing and Parenting course, which is an amazing course uh, to do together. It's a full mindfulness course and childbirth education course. And what's amazing about it is it helps prepare you not only for birth, but it's giving you and your partner life skills for coping with change and stress. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Reality check, parenting will bring that into your life for sure. Yeah. So uh, that I think this goes way beyond what most uh, courses focus on. That, that's A lot of courses on are information-based, and this is skills-based. Mm-hmm. That's also why it takes so long because you don't learn things by doing it once. Um, no. Yeah, and, and there are many courses out there that are short – Half yeah. a day or so, but yours yeah. is actually eight weeks, right? So you yeah. really get to know the people, yeah. get to know the partners, and go through more than just. Uh, and I yeah. like the fact and that you focus on after the baby because, oh, so. yeah. dear lord, it, <laughs> yes. it does put a strain on your relationship. Yes. Everything yes, yes. changes. Yes. You all of a sudden yeah. aren't partners anymore. You're just like roommates trying to survive this <laughs> screaming mm-hmm. bean. Like, well, yeah, yeah, I always say people think birth is the marathon. No. Oh. The, mar- the real marathon starts Sorry after. Sorry to burst your bubble, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's just tough. a matter of hours. Yeah. We need At a whole days. other podcast for that one. Yeah. But no, that's great. I really like that you're supporting the parents also afterwards because yeah. after the birthing classes, you have other workshops too, right? Yeah, I teach uh, like uh, mother's uh, well-being workshops. I also teach pregnancy well-being workshops. 
And I uh, work as a coach for pregnant women and for moms uh, to help, yeah, support them through this huge life transitioning uh, phase of life, you know, where just so much is changing. Oh, my, yeah. Wow. And, um, you know, looking back at my own experience, uh, I mean, your body is in constant change from pregnancy to that first year postpartum. Uh, your emotions are changing. Your brain is changing. Your hormones, your relationship with your partner, yeah. your in-laws, yeah. your friends, how you feel about your work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, like everything. <laughs> the list goes on and oh on. So, my God, yeah. So, and, yeah, I, I feel that women really need more support navigating that. And how – they can find your information on the website, right? Because it's EileenKennedy.nl, so yes, that's correct? And exactly. Eileen, we spell... A-I-L-E-E-N. Okay, well, there you go. And then Kennedy, Kennedy. as in, you know, that you know, famous president Kennedy. guy. <laughs> yes, that dude. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, we'll post that on, on the website. Well, it's already on our website, actually. Yeah. But also on, on social media. And uh, if you have any questions for Eileen, you can always contact her. Thank you for coming, Eileen. Thank yes, you for thank being you so in our much. chaotic Saturday morning show. <laughs> it you, was lots of you fun. You have so much valuable information, and we want to make sure that people can find you. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us one more time. My uh, website? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's or it's just your name. EileenKennedy.nl. And Facebook? And You're on Facebook's Facebook. Also. also. Instagram? Eileen. Also, also on Instagram. Me. I'm all over the place. You are. So we're going to we're gonna tag you and make sure that people can find you, uh, yeah. whether you're expecting mom or you already have kids. Or you mm. just need help afterwards, man. Yeah. Or you need some support. Or your wife is pregnant and you want her to have, like, a massage. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah. I also do that ding, kind ding, of ding. stuff. This one does That not scores lot. big points, guys. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> Christmas coming up, the holiday season. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's so great to be here. And, uh, yeah, I think we could talk about these topics for oh, a couple really of days. Yeah. I know. Well, you have to come There's back. There's so much to say. Yeah, please yeah. come back. Please, yeah. please, come please, back. please. please.